Hey everybody, um, I'm just going to demonstrate my Luna workflow in case that's of interest. Uh, I've been using Planetary System Stacker for a few weeks now and I, I really love it. It's free software, works on uh, any platform and uh, I found out about it from Cyril actually. Their, their Twitter account pointed somebody towards it because as far as I understand it, Cyril, which I've used for everything up until now, uh, their, their priority isn't on Planetary. Um, because, well, presumably because planetary system stacker exists and, you know, why duplicate, um, why duplicate work or, I, I don't know, but in any case, planetary system stacker, I think it's, it's brilliant and uh, I'm just going to take you through how I've been using it. I hope it's interesting. So we're in Planetary System Stacker, and I've got two video clips to work with. We have the South Pole of the Moon and the North Pole, because they don't fit in my field of view. So this was the Canon 550D on a 6-inch Max Sutov, and I'm filming in 1080p, which is the best the Canon can do. The seeing was pretty good that night by the looks of it. Just a bit of wobble, not too much. Okay, so in Planetary System Stacker, the first thing to do is sort your configuration out. So, you know, do you want to write your images as TIFFs or FITs or PNGs? Do you want to do stacking plus post processing and um, what drizzle factor would you like? Um, and then some of these points, they are sort of targeted towards automation because the alignment box, when we get to that, going through it manually, we can change that at the time, but if you were doing a batch, you'd, um, help, you'd be able to set that at this point and then start your batch off. And we're working on a planet or a surface. I think I'm going to go for surface here. Okay, uh, so that's the configuration sorted. Now let's add our video. I uh, will do this one first. Uh, so we've got our job there. You can add and take away jobs. Uh, press OK and start. And we're ranking and uh, aligning all frames here. So Planetary System Stacker has done its magic here and worked out what's going on. So we've got all of our frames ranked from best to worst. And we can choose what percentage you want to go with. So depending on what the conditions were like, what your gear is like, all kinds of different things, you can um, make your own decisions about what percentage you want to use. I am going to go for the best 12% I reckon. Um, let's press OK. Uh, we now get the choice to choose a region of interest if we wanted to have us, if we were working on a specific crater or something, maybe you'd want to choose a region of interest, but I just want the whole thing. So I'm going to press OK. And here's what, what we were talking about, the alignment point grid. So we can make it generate a grid for us. And we can see that parts of the moon here are missing, so I think I'd last use this on a planet. So I'm going to increase the pixel width, the width in pixels of our box. That looks a bit better. And we can see the whole of the moon, that, the whole bit we want and need is covered well now. Uh, so you, you might have to tweak these to make sure you're getting what you want. Uh, I'm going to press OK. Oh, 
Right, so we now handily have our frequency distribution of local warp sizes at alignment points. I think this is confirming what I thought, which is that we weren't getting a lot of like tearing because the seeing was quite steady, but I don't know. That's just a guess. Right, and uh, now we're in the post processing bit. Um, so if you hadn't pressed enter post processing at the, at the beginning, you would just have the stacked moon at this point which looks something like this. Uh, so this is we're basically talking about wavelets here and I was shooting colour on the DSLR so I have ticked for um, for planetary system stacker to sort out my RGB alignment to correct for atmospheric prismatic dispersion. Um, but there, yeah, here we go. So wavelets, perhaps you know about wavelets already, perhaps you don't. Um, the radius here is, I believe, the level of detail that you are choosing to work on. So I, I believe it's like coarse details, and then as you change this radius, it becomes finer and finer details, I think. Uh, so what I like to do is just turn it to the extreme to see what I'm working on, see what I'm affecting with this adjustment layer. Let's watch as we go through here. Wow. Uh, so I believe we're supposed to get something between one and two that looks good to start with. Okay. And because you add a lot of layers, it's good just to be gentle. I don't over sharpen is my approach. And we add a new correction layer, and when we do that, Planetary System Stacker will use this radius that we've used for the first one and it will add it by 1.5 times. So we get this, which is now working on that detail. So let's just add a bit of that. And another one. So as it says in the bottom here, you can add up to, you can add up to ten adjustment layers. Uh, the bilateral fraction can help because it, it goes kind of dim or kind of like dark. Sometimes the, it looks really artificial. I think this can help with that, but uh, it's definitely like a, a read the manual type slider. Uh, there's great manual. There's a great PDF guide that comes with the um, Planetary System Stacker uh, in the in the Git repository is where I got it from, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, very handy to have in reference back to. There, that that's what I was talking about with the darkness. You so see the way the disk, the whole disk got darker. And so I believe adding bilateral fraction will do, will address that. So not looking too shabby here, in my opinion. Ooh, steady. So I'm going to just add perhaps a bit more. Mm. That looks okay. Uh, so we've got some great c comparison features down here. So we can make a new version. So we're in version number two and we can just for the purposes of illustration take off all the adjustment layers of number two. So we're back to the raw image and then you can just switch to see how it's looking or, you know, as you go, you just incrementally compare whether or not you like the look of it. So I think that'll do for me. Uh, so you can save as, um, or just press save and that will um, put at the beginning when you were doing configuration and I chose TIFF, just pressing save should put a TIFF in the, in the folder there. So this this one, um, PSS planetary system stacker dot TIFF is the raw stack and then GPP is um, the wavelet shaped one that we just made but 
of course, we can save as if you want to, you know, give it a sort of more human, you know, depending on how you how you like to work. Because say like Luna South or something that you wanted to remember it by anything like that. And then we press OK, and then you could open the next one if you wanted to, do, and so forth. But yes, uh, from there, I next use Darktable. Now, perhaps you know Darktable, perhaps you don't. I think it's, for me, I had a bit of a learning curve with it, but I really love it. So it's a non-destructive photo editor, and what we're going to do is just go to the folder with our moon pictures in it. And then Darktable is going to import all of the, it's going to create a little file for each of our images. Uh, so it's just got these tabs here between Lighttable and Darkroom. Um, so when you choose the one that you want to work on, so we'll work on lunasouth.png. Um, we're in edit mode now, so we've got all of our tools at our disposal in here. And we can go back to the light table and you don't change anything until you export it, where it applies all of the things that you've changed. And um, so from light table, you choose where you want to store it. Uh, you choose where you want to store it here and then what you want to store it as, etc., and then you press export, and that's how you sort of make the changes happen to your file. That took me a while to get used to. Um, coming from more of like an um, Apple Photos type type place. Uh, so yeah, let's just um, so the sharpen tool here, like depending on whether or not you're happy with how sharp you made it. I like I think well, my approach is to slightly under sharpen in Planetary System Stacker, and then you've got the freedom in your photo editor to just add a bit more sharpness if you want to. Uh, but I think that, that looks okay to me. I'm just gonna put a bit of tone curve on it, because I just wanna bring out the dichotomy between the lighter parts of the, the crater ejector and things here with the darker Mari. I just wanna sort of Exaggerate that difference. Not too much. I don't. I don't like it when they go too unnatural. Okay. That's it. Um, Non-destructive, which I love, so you can uh, go to what you, what what's actively applied to the moon here, and we can turn it off and on, compare it, use different tools. And there's some really cool tools in uh, in Darktable. Absolutely love it. Uh, so yeah, happy with that. Um, and then that's it really. So I hope this guide has been useful. And if you give Planetary System Stacker a go, I hope you like it. I am in awe of it. I think it's amazing. And I um, just I just can't imagine how people write software. It just seems like so much work and it seems so difficult. And, you know, I just kudos to the authors of this software. And thanks to them for making such an awesome piece of software free as well. So on both counts, really, like uh, Planetary System Stacker and dark table, both of them fantastic in my opinion. Alright, that's it for now. Take care. Goodbye.